Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back at it again with another episode. Ah, uh, which Mego doll is it this week? It's not Mego. Oh yeah? Oh yeah! Those AEW figures finally came in! Well, it's about time we had some more wrestling stuff. Agreed! Wrestling? Wrestling? What in the green god green earth are you talking about? AEW ain't wrestling? Well, sure it is. Oof, just a bunch of Fruit Loops jumping around playing cosplay wrestling video game horse shit. Now, wait just a minute. I should have known you was going to break out these flippy shit spot monkey figures. They ain't even wrestling. Aw, oh, Jesus. Where's the wrestlers from the good old days? Where's the Boogie Woogie Man Jimmy Valiant? And Special Delivery Jones. Magnum TA. The Brooklyn Brawler. Nikita Koloff! Coco beware! There's John Cena. Fuck, fuck you, you, Mark! And the rest of you can get the fuck out of here, too! It wouldn't be on this piece of shit show anyway, you fucking marks! Oh, whatever, you commie son of a bitch! I don't need this, I was a Navy SEAL! Wait, 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 not you, stupid! Oh, okay. See, this is why we don't do wrestling episodes all the time anymore. But this is a special occasion, because today, it's AEW Unrivaled Figures Series 2 by Jazzwares! Raz Holly, hit the music! In 2020, Jazzwares released Series 1 of the AEW Unrivaled Wrestling figures to what appeared, and still appears, to be overwhelming demand. As of this recording, Series 1 is still tough to find at retail and online. Series 2 should be no different, as it has some of the most popular wrestlers in the company, some of them appearing in action figure form for the first time. The series also includes wrestlers that have had figures going all the way back to the WCW Galoob figures in the 1990s. All six figures should be big sellers, so let's take a look at Series 2 of the AEW Unrivaled figures from Jazzwares. Okay, so it's the Series 2 of the AEW Unrivaled collection by Jazzwares. Um, I've got them all here in the boxes here. Um, they're all individually numbered. Um, we start here at number 10. Um, there were uh, four other figures besides the uh, original six in the kind of in between. One of them was that Jericho figure that we saw from the, the little bit of the bubbly. Uh, and, and some others in between. They do make some special figures. I don't have any of those. I just have the, the figures that you're going to be able to find at retail or should be. Um, a lot of times you're going to have to, to pre-order these or unfortunately buy them from a scalper. However, let's take a look at these figures um, inside the box here looking very nice. I do like the design of the box. Um, there, there is a problem with the box and we'll get to that in a minute, but I do like the initial design of the box. It's kind of got a nice shape. We got the logo across the top here. The figure is nicely displayed. It's not hidden away if they do come with any accessories like our old friend Pentagon. Um, he has his hands here. You can see the accessories that he comes with um, displayed nicely. Also you can kind of see that here as well with the hangman but we'll see him in a second. Let's take a look at John Moxley. He's got his uh, he's got the AEW World Heavyweight Championship proudly displayed. That'll be the second one I have now because I did get that, uh, that with Jericho in the nice little set. Um, all, every single one of these, another thing I like about these, every single one of these uh, figures is their, their outfit is based on something specific. This is from AEW Revolution, February 29th, 2020, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, fun fact, this was the last pay-per-view that they had a big live crowd at uh, before the whole uh, pandemic thing. But 
Let's take a look here at some more of these boxes. Every single one of these um, does have, again, uh, a specific outfit from a specific date and time. AEW Double or Nothing for Pentagon here. Um, and they are individually numbered, Pentagon being number 14. Number 11 um, is Hangman Page. He has some cool accessories with him. And we'll see him outside of the box. This is from All Out of 2019. Uh, number 12 is MJF. Um, as far as I know, a couple of these guys, uh, Hangman, MJF, um, is going to be their, their first figures, their rookie figure, if you will. Uh, MJF comes with his Burberry scarf um, and a microphone, and you can see the whole figure uh, proudly displayed in the box. And it is from uh, AEW Double or Nothing, May 25th, Las Vegas, Nevada, 2019. Okay. And um, we took a look at Pentagon already, and we'll take a look at number 13. We have Ray Phoenix, and uh, his he doesn't really come with any accessories, but he looks great in the box there. You can see the whole figure, and uh, this uh, particular outfit is from AEW Double or Nothing uh, 2019. Um, and then finally, uh, someone who's had a whole lot of figures going all the way back to the 1990s, Galoob WCW figures uh dustin rhodes um and here he is um and i like I, it kind of looks like these things are in a proper scale too since dustin's pretty tall um uh, we're gonna take a look we're gonna line them all up and see if he is uh, quite quite taller than the rest of these guys if they did put him in a particular scale i really hope that they did and again this is from aew dynamite october 9th 2019 boston mass so Without any further ado, let's go ahead and open these figures up and see what they look like on the inside. All right, so before we open everything up, I, I do have the gripe. This is the main gripe. It's the gripe I have at the last time. Oh, obviously, they haven't had time to change their packaging around. All this stuff gets planned way out in advance. But still, my main issue with these is that these are made to look like they're collector's boxes. It's like, oh, I can just open this up and, and pull the figure out and it'll be, it'll be awesome. Um, no, these are uh, a bubble and you need to, to tear them apart to get them open. So it, don't think that you need to like sit here with a, with a razor blade and carefully open these up because in order to get the figure out, you have to destroy the package. So here is John Moxley um, from Series 2. Here he is um, looking pretty goddamn dope. Um, very good detail on this figure. Just right off the bat, you notice he has the little, the little scar above the eye. Uh, nice detail there. Uh, the hair looks cool. The expression on his face looks cool. He comes with the uh, AEW World Heavyweight Championship belt. This is not unlike the uh, the New Japan Pro Wrestling belt, uh, the IWGP Heavyweight title that came with the uh, the, the Super Seven Ultimates uh, New Japan figures. Um, it got a like sort of a rubbery uh, strap and hard plastic plates. Very very cool looking. It shines in the light, um, and it is kind of a pain in the ass to put back on once you've got it off. It has these little rubber pegs that go through these little holes, and uh, it's supposed to be pretty simple. It's easier to put back on than the uh, the New Japan ones, um, but still kind of a pain in the ass. But let's take a look at the figure, though. We're not really here, here to look at the belt. That's the second goddamn belt I've got. I already got the world title when I got Chris Jericho last year. So um, here is John Moxley. He has his uh, his entrance vest on. Says Mox on the back. Very cool. Looks just like he does in real life pretty goddamn cool very good detail um awesome awesome figure um the posabilities there all sorts of points of articulation it's got the double knees and stuff as if you need them um he doesn't have any knee pads on so there's nothing really restricting his movement um you can put all kinds of cool poses on this guy but here here comes the rub here's the gag the, the, the part that I'm always going to bitch about on these figures, now it's Series 2, they haven't had a lot of time to, to make changes and, and make any fixes, uh, but here's the biggest problem with AEW figures. The goddamn ball joints are nude! So anytime you want to look at the figure, you know, you put him in a crazy like dynamic pose like he's doing a big kick, you look underneath, it looks like his fucking dick's hanging out! Um, so... 
there's that. There's points for that. I got to take points off for that. Otherwise, pretty cool figure. Another thing you might want to take points off for, which is necessarily the uh, the fault of Jazzwares or AEW, is the fact that you can't find these fucking things anywhere without having to pre-order them or, or know somebody that can get them for you um, or paying a fucking scalper. Um, yeah, these have been super scalped. Um, they've been very scarce. Many people haven't seen them at all at the stores, um, or if they have, it's been very, very little. Um, I've been pretty lucky so far. I've been able to pre-order them. Um, I've only had to buy one or two figures from a scalper. But this is John Moxley. He's got his little side tattoo on his arm. Um, very cool looking figure. Um, also, this is uh, Raz Holly's favorite guy. Um, so hopefully he'll be able to find one um, in his travels. All right, and so here is Hangman Page. Um, wow, wow, super cool figure. This is the first time uh, Adam Page has had an action figure. He has his uh, pointy finger there, so just like in his entrance where he comes out and he puts his his gun in the air or whatever he's doing, his cowboy shit that he does. He's got, it comes with this rope that he wears around his neck. Um, doesn't it's not in a noose um even though he's the hangman page um he stopped wearing it he just kept he just hang, had a rope just a rope um because you probably don't want to go through fucking customs with a noose um in in today's uh, day and age probably not um so there's that um cool though very cool looking um he's got the little bandana um it's it's attached on there you can take it off if you remove the head you just do a quick head pop and you can take the uh you can take that bandana right off he has his entrance vest which also comes off um says hangman adam page on the back it says hangman right there across the ass um nice detail on the knee pads and boots these boots are big and thick and he stands up super easily i can shake the table and he ain't going no place um very very cool looking figure nice detail not over detailed like they didn't do a lot of uh, dry brushing or anything like that on this but didn't have to looks really really good also comes with uh, an, a regular grabby hand a uh, holdy hand if you will the elbow pad removable very cool accessories very cool looking figure glad i got this in my collection awesome for hangman page's first figure Okay, and speaking of first figures, uh, here is Maxwell Jacob Friedman, uh, otherwise known as MJF. Um, and look at him here with his uh, with his awesome Burberry scarf that he's got on here. They didn't exactly do the Burberry print. Um, there's probably a good reason for that. They don't own it, so um, they, yeah, they did a, a a great approximation of it, missing the little red lines, but close enough, close enough. Very cool. Uh, the one thing I would say about this, it's a little thick, and it's hard to, to get to sit just right on the figure, um, but. Once you do get it on there, it looks great, and it's it's, a, it's pretty cool. It looks just like him. So, And then let's take a look at the detail on the figure. Look at this face. He's got this fucking dumb smirk on his face. He's so annoying and punchable. There he is. It's MJF. He's, he's a fucking asshole, and he's great. And uh, he's got his tattoo, his big lion tattoo. He has this, um, this tattoo right here, just like he does in real life. Has a microphone in his hand. A uh, hand uh, sculpted to hold the microphone. Came in the package holding it. You can take it out pretty easily, slide it back in. Um, otherwise, it looks like he's he's jacking himself off. He's like, oh, I'm going to come. But anyway, um, so there's that. And let me put the microphone back in his hand um, so he looks more appropriate um, for television here. And then see, he's got the lions on the, on the trunks and the MJF across the ass and the little Burberry accent on the back of the knee pads. Very, very cool. Um, it's cool what they did with the with the ankle joint here. Or they put it on the boot, so you can have that crease, and it doesn't look unnatural, and you still get the nice ankle twist posability. I love the posability on these things. I love the sculpts. I love the whole complete package with a couple of gripes, um, namely the fucking uh, naked balls on the figures and the uh, the packaging that's not reclosable. Um, the uh, collector's cartons or collector's boxes that they should be fucking coming in like Hasbro and Mattel and everything else comes in nowadays, or at least I think they do. You can reseal the package or not seal it up, but at least reclose the package 
package and uh, and, and store the figures uh, when you're not fucking around with them. But otherwise, pretty cool fucking figure. Great, great fucking likeness of who this is supposed to be. I I'm super excited to have this in my collection. It's MJF. And now let's take a look at the Lucha Bros, Ray Phoenix and Pentagon. Um, very, very fucking cool looking figures, very high detail. Um, you know, these are the things that, that people are going to be looking at right away to go grab first. Um, these are, again, um, in, I think we've had figures of these guys before, maybe not in the United States. Um, God damn it. I think I may have seen a Pentagon figure here and there, but yeah, Reef, Ray Phoenix, Pentagon. These are the first figures that as far as, uh, uh, you know, wide distribution, these are the first ones that I can remember. Um, and he, let's take a look at Ray Phoenix first. Uh, Ray Phoenix, great looking detail on his tattoos. He's got tattoos all over his torso and arms. Um, has tattoos underneath his arms. Um, it, this all looks very true to real life. Um, if you if you zoom in on this, you can see the the details all there. These are based on his real life fucking tattoos. Looks wow. Such such great high detail. I don't even know how they pull this off. It's a, it's a stamp or a sticker or something. But man, looks really really cool. Nice detail on the mask. Has this open mouth expression like ah, um, kind of cool. He has the little uh, piece that hangs off the back here. It's all all one piece on the head, but very very cool. Nice detail on the on the uh, knee pads, on the tights, on the boots says Mexican right there on the on the right knee pad and then the uh, the the flaming phoenix right there on the other knee pad very cool the knee pads don't necessarily uh, hinder the movement too bad you can still get a pretty good bend on these uh, just move the knee pad around if you need to very very cool looking figure and now let's check out fucking pentagon oh my god there he is penta el cerro miedo and yeah does he do it is that what you want to know cerro miedo he does do it he comes with the little hand um with the three fingers up so he can do his uh, signature uh, hand movement there also comes with a regular hand to replace it with it, i don't know why the fuck you'd want to do that and speaking of tattoos holy shit look at the tats on fucking pentagon my god damn like all over the arms underneath and uh just super high detail just like he looks in real life very very cool fucking figure and look at that face with the tongue out and the contacts in the eyes wow wow i'm like this this was as far as this series is concerned i got this has got to be my number one in this series fucking pentagon so fucking cool looking just the detail on every single piece of his costume um he is this this is i don't know if this is removable um it, it does seem like it's a separate piece but i don't know if you can take it off i don't know why you would um but still pretty goddamn cool fucking penta el cero m there he is cero miedo and lastly here he is it's the natural dustin rhodes um in his uh, red and black uh, costume and uh, you can again tattoos very very cool um look on the side of the arm here um you can even see where he's gotten the, it corrected because he had other tattoos where he's covered them up um very very cool looking shit on this like it's very true to life very much looks like his real life stuff that he has um his real gear the the little details little stitches on the gloves um little you know the paint applications the the zipper on his shirt there um that says the natural right down his back um it says the natural on the boots very very cool got the got the uh, the steer and the uh the movie camera on the side there so reference to his uh career there um he has the tattoo that says deliverance partly covered um with uh, the the wrist tape 
um, looks vi just like he does. It looks just like he does in real life. The guy has that dour fucking expression that he usually has on his face. Um, but yeah, there he is. It's Dustin Rhodes. Um, very, very cool looking. And one thing I, I mentioned before when I, when I first saw him, I was like, wow, he looks, he looks tall. He looks taller than the rest of these motherfuckers. And if I grab, uh, du uh Dustin's brother right here, if I grab Cody and I stand them up next to each other, um, you can see there they are. It's they they are in scale. They are in in a scale with each other. This is this is the height difference between uh, Cody and Dustin. So pretty fucking cool. Like that they're all in scale. So we don't have um, you know tiny little luchador guys that are as big as the giants. Um, I believe Dustin's about six six. So he's a big fucking dude. He's a real tall guy, and uh, everybody's is in scale with everybody else. So is that not the fucking coolest thing? I think it is. All right, so at the end of the day, these are great, great figures. Um, another great series from Jazzwares for the AEW figures. A couple of gripes aside, these are pretty awesome, and I would recommend them if you can find them for 20 bucks. They're pretty goddamn cool, and you're not going to find better looking or more high detail figures for that price. Um, they do get a little bit better when you get into the uh, the Ultimates like we've seen before, um, but as far as uh, $20 standard figures, uh, goddamn, dude, these are fucking great. Well, that's Series 2. What did you think of these figures? Were you able to find any of them? Let us know in the comments down below. Either way, it was a nice break from all the dirty old dolls. I hope there are some more wrestling figures soon. I'm sure we'll see more this year. But speaking of dirty old dolls, Figures Toy Company makes wrestling figures, and in a future episode, we'll be taking a look at them. If they're anything like their Mego style figures, you can send me home too. Anyway, that's all for the Dan Classic Show this week. Rex Holly, hit the music! <laughs>